Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second part of our introduction to pre-calculus in section 1.1 as we talk all about functions. So last time you learned all about what makes a relation an actual function. You got a chance to play with the domain and range of functions, the vertical line test, and a lot of other fun things. Today is going to be more algebra heavy. We're going to talk about what a function is in terms of algebra, how we can play with it, and also how can we find functions looking at a graph. So this is section 1.1, part 2. So continue where we left off. In general here, friends, for functions, we can really just plug in anything we want, whatever we want for x. That's our input, no matter how strange it is. Because really, functions are kind of like a placeholder. And here's what I mean. If I take this function here, f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 7. x is our input or domain. And f of x is like our y value or our output or range. We can really plug in anything we want for x. If, for example, I want to say, well, what would f of 3 be? Meaning, when x is 3 and I plug x back into my function, what is the f value or what is the y value when I plug in the x value of 3? But remember how I said it's like a placeholder? Here's what I mean. If I ask you, what is f of 3? Well, 3 goes in for all of the x's, right? So this would be f of 3 equals, well, let's use our function here. What goes in for x? 3 squared minus 4 times 3 and plus 7. Notice there's no 3 at the end because the 7 doesn't have an x attached. So it's just plus 3. All right, well, let's keep going with that. What would f of 3 be? Let's simplify this, friends. We get 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 3 is 12, plus 7. Ooh, I've got some addition and subtraction. If you're like me, I like to put all my additions together, and then I'll do my subtractions at the end. It's just easier on my brain. Maybe it is for you, too. All right, 9 plus 7, and then minus 12. Good. So you know what? In this function f of 3 is 4, meaning when I plugged in the x value of 3 into my function, my function value or my y value is 4. f of 3 is 4. So let's try plugging in different things. Let's look here on the bottom. Can you use the same function up here? And again, think about using the function like a placeholder. Whatever you're plugging in for x, it goes in everywhere for all the x's, folks. Let's do one more together and see how we do. Can you find for me f of 1? Again, 1 is the x value, and you're going to find out what is the f or y value when you plug in 1. Ready? So this is going to be f of 1 is x is 1, right? All right, 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 7. Okay, how about 1 squared is 1 minus 4 plus 7. Remember that little trick before when I put all my pluses together? So 1 plus 7. 7 minus 4, and there you go. f of 1 is 4. Now, it's a kind of a cool coincidence that f of 3 was 4 and f of 1 is 4, but like I said, that's just a coincidence. All right, can you pause the video, and can you try number 2? See what you can do about number 3. This is interesting. What's that 2 doing out in the front? What does that mean? When do you do it? And then how about 4? How strange is that? f of p? And then 5 will be really interesting. All right. Try at least number 2, maybe 3, and we'll catch up in just a second. All right. Welcome back, friends. Let's try f of 2. So for number 2, f of 2. Again, placeholder, right? f of 2 should be 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 7. Okay, that should be 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 7. All right, that would be, again, 4 plus 7 is 11, minus 8 is 3. So I'm saying that when x is 2, the y value is 3. When x is 2, the function value is 3. It means the same thing. How did you do? All right, number 3. Number 3 is interesting because it has that 2 in the front. But I think I still want to do this part first. I still want to plug in x is negative 1. But what do you think I'm going to do with that 2? 
Well, I don't know. Let's forget the, just the inside box for just a second. Okay, what is f of negative 1? Now, this is a negative, friend. So when I plug in a negative, let's just be really, really careful with negatives. So I'm going to use a lot of parentheses here. Watch this. I'm going to do f of negative 1 is parentheses negative 1 squared. Now, notice that parentheses. Minus 4 times parentheses negative 1 plus 7. Okay, and the reason is when you do negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive 1. And I have minus 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4, so I see a minus minus coming up, plus 7. All right, so minus minus, remember that, friends, is just a plus. So you really just have 1 plus 4 plus 7 is 12. Okay, now that is f of negative 1, right? So then what are we going to do with that 2? What do you think that 2 over here is doing to the function? It is multiplying, if that's what you said. Good job. So we're going to take our answer, and we're going to multiply it by 2. That means 2 times f of negative 1 would be 2 times 12 was f of negative 1. So my real, real answer to number 3, friends, is 24. 2 times f of negative 1 is equal to 24. Good job. How about number four? Well, in order to do number four, I think I need to make a little bit of space here. So let me make a little space up above here, friends, and we can do it together. All right. F of P. Now, that's kind of strange because what is P? It's not a number. It's just a letter. Mr. Brown, what's wrong with you? Well, it's okay. Remember, it's just a placeholder, right? So plug it in. I'm actually going to use this function here so I can see it better because it is different. F of P. F of P would be f of p, well, p goes in for every x, would be p squared minus 4 times p is x plus 7. So it's just p squared minus 4p plus 7. That's it. There's nothing more to do with it. I don't have to do any more algebra. I don't have to factor it or solve or anything. It's just that. Because p, we don't know what the value is, so we just leave it for dead. That's number 4. All done. Yay. All right, number 5 is a little tricky. I need to do f of t plus 2. All right, this one I definitely want to use, again, the placeholder up here to help. Come on this way again. f of t plus 2. So I guess every time you have something in the parentheses that stands for x, you're plugging in for x. The whole thing, though, not just each one at a time, the whole shebang, meaning x is t plus 2, which means way up here again, f of t plus 2 is equal to t plus 2 squared minus 4 times t plus 2 plus 7. Okay, so this gets plugged in for the entire x. It's just not t here and there and then 2 later. Now the whole thing gets plugged in, the whole piece. Think of it as one chunk. Now, we've got to do a little bit of algebra here, friends. Here we go. How do I do this? Remember, whenever you have to multiply or square two terms, you have to FOIL. We cannot just distribute the, t, the squared in both pieces. That is not legal in Jersey. We can't do that. So we have to FOIL, which means you have to think of this as t plus 2 times t plus 2. Why don't we do that really quick? t plus 2 times t plus 2. If we FOIL that, we should get t times t. We get a 2t from the outsides, from the insides, and then from the outsides, 2 plus 2, or the last, I'm sorry, last terms. That's the same thing as t squared plus 4t plus 4. Okay. Wow, that's some algebra there. <laughs> that was just this piece right here. Let's keep going. This piece here is negative 4 times t plus 2. Notice that that negative 4 can distribute in. That's legal there. That would be negative 4 times t. And negative 4 times a positive 2 would be minus 8. And then we have a plus 7 at the end. Okay, should we put the whole thing together? Let me put this in a beautiful purple up here, up on top. All right. So we have t squared plus 4t plus 4. That was just this little piece here. And then we're going to add this part, which is minus 4t minus 8. That was just this piece here. And then add the 7 at the end. All right, now our job is, can we gather all of our like terms together? I see a t squared here. Cool. I see a plus 4t and a minus 4t. Oh, sweet, they're opposite, so they cancel each other out. 
explosive, and exciting. Pre-calculus. All right, how about our other leftover terms? We have a plus 4, a minus 8, and a plus 7. That's equal to 3. Oops. Let's use our continued red here. And there you go, friends. The answer to number 5, after all that sweat and tears, is t squared plus 3. Notice the algebra on that. That's the important thing I want you to know for number 5, because that's going to lead into the next thing. It's going to be tough, too, in a second. That's going to use a lot of algebra. Okay, just to review, number one was okay, number two was okay, number three was a little tough, had to multiply the two at the end, number four was actually easier than we thought, we just plugged in P, but number five was a tough one, so make sure you put a star next to it or circle it, if you need to come back to it, you can. Okay, so functions are great, like we said, we can plug in anything we want, it's just a placeholder, and that's when we do the algebra, but let's take a break in a second, can we actually plug in X values and use a graph? All right, this is the function y equals f of x. That's our function. It's a y equals. It's also f of x equals. It means the same thing. And our questions are here on the bottom, friends. What are each of those equal to? Now, if you remember, just like before, the number inside the parentheses is the x value. And what are you going to give me? The f of x value. So you usually plug into an equation. Oh, but wait, there's no equation here. There's a graph. But that's okay. Remember that f is the same thing as y value. So when you plug in the x, you give me the y. Ready? Here we go. All right, for part a, I want to know what is f of 2. Meaning when x is 2, what is the y value? All right, well, let's go to our graph over here. When x is 2, so I'm looking along the x-axis here. Here's where my eyes are looking. x is 1 x is 2. All right, when x is 2, let's go up to our graph, because our graph is upstairs here. Up to our graph, right there. There's our graph. We're hitting at x equals 2. What is that corresponding y value? There we go. So f of 2, when x is 2, y equals 5. That's kind of the same thing as just saying the point 2 comma 5. So final answer, what's f of 2? It's equal to 5. How about part b? f of 0. So when x is 0, can you look on your graph, friends? When x is 0, what is the corresponding y value? Okay, x is 0 is right here in the middle. Go up to your graph. There it is. What's the y value there? It's 1. So f of 0 is 1 because you have the sort of x, y point of 0, comma 1. You want to try the last one on your own? Good luck, guys. What is f of negative 2 equal to? Good luck. Okay, when I look at the graph and I go to negative 2, here's negative 1, negative 2. X is negative 2. Now the graph is actually below it, so I have to go down from the graph and look over here. What is that y value over here? I think it's negative 3. So therefore, when x is negative 2, y is negative 3. There you go. I think sometimes this is a little bit easier than the algebra we did before, but just get comfy doing it either way, looking at a graph and finding the x, y points, or doing it algebraically by hand. Good job. And that leads us to our last part, sort of the trickiest part that I don't think we did in Algebra 2 last year. Believe it or not, it looks scary, but this is actually a preview of calculus. I know we're in pre-calculus, but this is literally a preview of calculus. And something that's called the difference quotient. Difference quotient is something in calculus that leads into one of the biggest topics called the derivative. But you don't have to worry about that until next year or whenever you take calculus if you do. Here's what the difference quotient looks like, folks. Difference quotient is this formula here, f of x plus h. You're going to plug in x plus h first. Then you're going to subtract just regular f of x function and divide by h. What is h? It doesn't matter. It's just part of the formula. Why are we doing this? Because of the algebra involved of plugging into a function. Do you ever have to memorize this? this formula here for different quotients? This year, no. Next year, possibly in calculus, but for no, this year you don't have to. It's okay, I'll always give it to you. Okay, so let's try to figure this out, guys. Can we use the difference quotient and apply it to f of x equals x plus four? All right, I need a new screen for this one. f of x equals x plus four. And off to the side, let me write the difference quotient here. Here's the dq. We said it was f of 
x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now this is a really cool formula and when it works out it's so sweet. So practice this a lot because the algebra is kind of tricky here. But again this is such a great part of calculus that's why we're doing it a little bit this year to get ahead of it. Okay so here's what I would do friends. Let's do each piece at a time. I would do this piece first and then I'm going to subtract the OG, the original function, and then we're going to divide by h and see what kind of algebra magic happens. Okay, so take the difference quotient piece by piece. Ready? Let's do f of x plus h. What is that? Remember guys, this inside the parentheses goes in for x anywhere you see in the function, like a placeholder. Remember this is sort of like x plus 4. So whatever you have inside here for x, anything gets plugged in here or here. Well, hey, I'm plugging in this thing. It's a big chunk. Remember the t plus 2 we just did before? Plug this whole thing in. f of x plus h should be not x plus 4, but x plus h plus 4. Because I plugged it in. It replaced and substituted in for the entire x. You basically subbed it into the game. x plus h, you pasted it in here for x. So instead of x plus 4, I have x plus h plus 4. All right, well, there's nothing in front of the parentheses. It's not being squared or raised to any kind of power. So I can release those parentheses and say that's just x plus h plus 4. Okay, let that sit and chill. Now, the second part in brown, we want to subtract f of x. Remember, f of x is just the OG. It's your original function. So we're going to take what we got over here, and we're going to subtract the original function which is x plus 4. Notice, friends, I'm subtracting, so I'm putting things in parentheses because I know I'm going to have to distribute that negative in in just a second. Good algebra practice. Okay, folks, here's what we got. Here is f of x plus h, and we're subtracting f of x. All right, let's simplify that. Now, we do have a negative in front of the parentheses, so we can distribute that in. Everyone gets to play. This becomes x plus h plus 4 minus x minus 4. Ooh, I see lots of opposites here. Ready? Do you see the x's canceling? Poof, are gone. How about, those, how about those 4's? 4's are gone too. And believe it or not, when you're all done, this part, you just get h when you're done. Does this always happen? No. There is always a lot of canceling. This just happened to cancel a lot, but it's not always going to be H on top. Okay, remember the last step? Last step up here is we're going to divide our final answer by H. So we're going to take this answer and divide by H. And what is H divided by H? It's 1. Yay! So my answer, what is the difference quotient when I plug into F of X equals X plus 4? Is 1. Is it always 1? No. No, it's not. That was just a nice, pretty, pretty function. And we'll try a little bit of a tougher one in just a second. All right, the second's over. <laughs> Here we go. If you're daring enough, do you want to try number six on your own? It's tricky, but I bet you could do it. x squared minus 3x plus 2. Let's write that down. x squared minus 3x plus 2. Let me just double check, make sure I wrote that down. Mr. Brown did. Good job, Mr. Brown. All right. Remember, here's our DQ over here. Difference quotient. How about f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And like I said before, take it in terms of pieces, guys. Don't do the whole thing at once. It's really tricky. Do the f of x plus h first. Then subtract your original function. And then when you're done, you'll divide by h. All right. Now, this first part is always the toughest, friends. f of x plus h. Okay, ready? We're plugging that in. Remember, think of this whole chunk as x. So he gets plugged in to every single x. Ready? Here's my temptation. Watch this. This is a mistake. So don't write this down, but this is a very, very easy mistake. All right, it looks like I'm just going to do f of x plus h. All right, so that's going to be what? x squared minus 3x plus 2. That's f of x. And then what? Plus h? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not that easy, guys. It's not that easy. You don't break it apart and put the h separately. You have to plug the entire x plus h and sub him into the game. 
meaning you're subbing him in for this x. That's x squared becomes x plus h squared minus, here's another x. Let's plug him into the game, x plus h. So not minus 3x, but minus 3x plus h. The 2 on the end doesn't have any x on it, so we just have plus 2. Okay, I'm going to put a little star next to that, friends, because that step is usually one of the toughest. All right, so everywhere where there was an x, I plugged in x plus h. All right, now, just like we did before in our previous examples, let's do some major algebra here, friends. Ready? x plus h squared, remember, we have to foil that. We can't distribute. And I think this 3 can maybe distribute into that parenthesis in just a second, too, friends. Ready? Here we go. All right, FOIL, ready? x squared plus an xh plus another xh. Remember, hx and xh are the same thing, one of our algebra properties from way back when, plus our last, which is h squared. All right, I'll distribute that negative 3 into both pieces, and I should get minus 3x, minus 3h, and plus 2. I think there's a little bit of simplifying right about here. Let's see what I can do with these friends. Ready? x squared. I've got an xh, another xh. So I've got two xhs. And the rest stays as is. Boy, that looks really tough. All right, so let it sit for a little bit. Now we're going to take that, and we're going to do part two over here. Let's take that function that we just found, and we're going to subtract the original f of x, this friend. Remember, we're subtracting, so again, those huge parentheses are so important, friends. Please don't forget. All right, I'm going to plug in just the original f of x. There we go. All right, let's see what we can do here, friends. Ready? x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 2. Nothing changes, but then... Where that negative goes in, here we go, negative x squared. A negative times a minus 3x becomes a positive 3x, and a negative times a plus 2 becomes a minus 2. All right, now we've got some definite canceling going on. All right, let's see, I see the x squares going. Do you see that? <laughs> gone. Oh, I see another one, 3x's. <laughs> and the 2's. <laughs> I love canceling in math. Here we go. What's left after all that destruction? How about a 2xh? How about plus an h squared? And I think the only thing left after that is a minus 3h. Everything else died. Do you notice something in particular? What does every term here have in common? Do you see all the h's? Then you know you're doing it right. If you see h's in every term, then you know you did it right. If you don't, then you made some kind of algebra mistake. You have to go back and double check because the next step is really important. And that next step is what we had bottom here, was let's divide by h, ready? Okay, now there is gonna be a lot of canceling of h's, but it's harder to see unless maybe you take an h, a factor an h out of every term, what we call the greatest common factor, GCF. So if I factor an h out of everywhere, how about a 2x? Factor an h out of h squared leaves you with just one h, and then minus three at the end here. Factoring an h out, Still have an H on the bottom. And I do that, friends, because now, now I can cancel it out. It's easier to see. Final answer. Ready? Here we go. What is the difference quotient on X squared minus 3X plus 2? It is 2X plus H minus 3. That is our final answer here. Boy, that was tough. How did you do? We'll definitely do a lot of practice of this in class, but you can see it takes a lot of algebra which is why we're always saying our algebra skills need to be so solid for this class. That ends section 1.1. Congratulations, folks. You're all done.